Hey everyone, this time on Tim Talks Audio, we're gonna explode some pitches. In a recent video, a comment was asked on how to handle program drums when we're working with MIDI and it's just on one track. Sometimes you wanna go in and manipulate the different sounds as if you're working with acoustic drums. It's kind of hard if you're only working with one track and one channel, but there is a way to break it out so that it's on multiple channels. And remember, tracks and channels are not the same thing. Tracks hold all of the information, whether it's MIDI information or instrument information, like audio waveforms. And channels are like on a mixer, how you have the different instruments laid out across. So tracks do not equal channels. Really though, what we wanna do is take our MIDI drums, and that's a great example, and that's what we're gonna get into today, and separate everything out so that we can manipulate it as if it was recorded like acoustic drums. So let's dive into the DAW. Okay, here we are inside of our session and what we have is just one instance of Steven Slate Drums 5. I have a basic drum kit pulled open and I just threw a couple grooves together. And you can see that everything is on just this one track. It's holding all of our information. And if we have the mixer page open, we can see that we only have one channel. This is by default, how things are usually handled. There are some PreSonus Impact XT presets that you can pull open and have multiple different outputs from that one instrument. And if you're interested in checking out a video on how to route your multi-out VSTi instruments, check out this video in the corner, or you can check out the link in the description where I go over how to get those multiple outputs. But we're not gonna do that right now. We're gonna kind of simplify that video or modify it really. So we have our one track, we have our one channel and everything is going to come out here. If we hit play, all of our drums are gonna come out this one channel. We can just watch the meters. So as you saw, stereo drums coming out the one channel and things sound good, but this is just drums. Maybe in your production, this isn't cutting enough or it's cutting too much. And you wanna go in and manipulate the different sounds or use some of your plugins inside of your machine to change those sounds instead of just using whatever's built into your MIDI instrument or some of the stock plugins that you have and just being limited to the one channel and trying to adjust the kick drum when everything's mixed together. We don't want that. So this is gonna be a two step process, but the two steps are really easy and we could turn it into a macro if we really wanted to. But let me go over the steps. So the first thing we're gonna do is we're going to select the MIDI event in question. I only have this one in the session, so you know which one I'm grabbing. From here, what we're gonna do is we're going to right click, or if you're on a trackpad or a Mac, that's gonna be a two finger click where you get this menu. In here, go down to instrument parts and underneath instrument parts, here's the last one we're looking for. We're gonna do explode pitches to tracks. What this will do, it will analyze the MIDI event and take all of your different notes that have different values. So things like C1, D1, E1, all of the different MIDI notes, it will separate those out onto their own individual tracks. Watch. So now I have a whole lot of tracks going on. Let me get rid of my mixer and I'm just going to increase the height of everything real quick. And they're really tiny, but there are a bunch of little flags in here of all of our different MIDI notes that were a part of that groove that we had going on. This doesn't really change much other than extracting and making new tracks. If we open the mixer back up, we can see we still only have the one channel. So we can't go in and manipulate just the snare drum, for example. Putting the mixer away again, now we go to step two. Okay, I've kind of reset real quick. We have our exploded pitches to different tracks. And you can see I have them all selected because by default, when you do this, it will have all of your new tracks and the MIDI events selected. From here, it's really easy. 
on a PC, you hit Control B, or on a Mac, you hit Command B. And this will bounce the MIDI to audio. So now we've bounced all of those MIDI information and every time it hit, it gives us these new audio waveforms and these audio tracks. And if we open up the mixer now, we have many channels all associated with some audio events. So we can go in and name them. If you really, you should have done that before you name all of the different tracks and the MIDI events. And when you bounce, all of those names will carry over. But Everything's spread out now. If you want to go in and throw an SSL style plugin on your snare drum, you absolutely can do that. You can just find your snare and throw your plugin on. And like I said earlier, we can turn this into a macro. Let's open up our macro editor by going to this button here, and then we can just hit the cogwheel and we'll go to macro organizer. And we're gonna make a new macro. We'll call this explode and bounce. And now we need to add our commands into this new macro we're gonna make. So on the left hand side, you can go to search and start typing explode. And underneath instrument parts, explode pitches to tracks. I wanna add that in. And then we just need to bounce. When you search bounce, you're gonna go with bounce selection and we'll add that in. And there we go, we now have a new macro, explode and bounce. We can go even further and assign a keyboard shortcut to this. To do that, open up your keyboard shortcuts. I have this as a shortcut itself, Control K for me when I'm on my PC or Command K when I'm on my Mac. And now I can start looking for, underneath macros, explode and bounce. This is the one we just made. And now you can just assign whatever keyboard shortcut you want. I'm gonna go with Alt, Control, Shift, and P it's not being used by anything else. And yes, there's a lot going on with my left hand if I'm going to do this as a keyboard shortcut, but it's a shortcut for a reason. Instead of going through and doing all of these things, it's going to do it for us. I'm going to hit assign, going to hit apply, and there we go. So if I actually just undo a few times, I'm back to the one track, one channel, and now let's do it. Control, Shift, Alt, P. And there we go, in just about 10 seconds or so, with the length of the part that I had and my machine, I was able to explode all of my pitches to new tracks and then bounce all of those new tracks to audio files so I can go in and manipulate these drums however I need to for the production I'm working on. There's other reasons to use explode pitches to tracks, and this was a little sample of how to create your own macro as well, and that one we need a really more in-depth video on, and that'll come soon enough. I'm curious though, what are some reasons that you use explode pitches to tracks that don't deal with MIDI drums? Let me know in the comments below. That's all for now. If you found anything informative, please like and share the video. For mixing or lesson information, feel free to reach out to me on the Discord, which there will be a link in the description down below. And if you have a question or a request for a video, leave it in a comment and I'll answer it in a future video. Thanks for watching.